everyone, and welcome to BrickCats. Today I am reviewing David Buchholz's and Brick Vault's Republic Gunship Version 2, which released earlier this summer. This is the Clone Wars variant, but there are four other variants available, and you can buy the collection of all five for a reduced price as well. The gunship made its first appearance in Episode 2, The Attack of the Clones, but the version you see here featured heavily in the Clone Wars TV series, and an early Imperial version even showed up in the Bad Batch TV show a couple of times. I dare say that at this point, the gunship has reached iconic status among Star Wars fans, and personally I've always loved the shape of this thing. It reminds me of one of those big bumblebees that buzz around the flowers in the summer, and it kind of moves like one too. In my reviews, I offer my opinions on aesthetics and metal features, parts issues you might want to look out for, the model's integrity, the build experience, and I offer a conclusion. If you're watching this, I assume you have bought the instructions or are interested in buying them, and I assume a basic level of familiarity with Bricklink's ordering system. Lastly, my disclaimer on this and all my mock reviews is that I only use genuine LEGO bricks, and I always purchase the instructions for myself, for my own personal enjoyment in the hopes that my advice will make your experience more enjoyable and or less expensive. It should not surprise anyone that Dave Buchholz leaves few details to the imagination. Moving front to back, the detailing on the nose is absolutely superb. And the green outline around the cannons is just the right thickness and shape. I really like the backpack piece on the front here. It's pretty much the perfect choice. And you can see that I chose to build the non-posable cannons. And I really like how these fender pieces uh, shape out the gun whales here. This also brings me to my least favorite part about this model, which is this gap between the forward cockpit and the fuselage. And this was actually kind of surprising to me. I looked pretty closely at Brick Vault's website and the um, review video there to check and make sure I built it right, but it does appear to be built correctly. And given the obvious skill of the designer and what I can only describe as meticulous detail throughout the rest of the model, um, that gap just, uh, I think it deserves the benefit of the doubt. I, I trust that it was simply not possible to, to fill in and still have this look as good as it does with the current piece inventory without uh, some serious design compromises there. But anyway, it just struck me as a little odd and it is kind of noticeable in my opinion. Both cockpits have a seat inside and a control panel, and many figures do fit in both of them, although I don't have one handy to show you. And this is one of the only gunship models I know that accurately represents the rear cockpit um, with, the, with the opaque top. Of course, in the UCS gunship, this is a printed piece and it does have the opaque stripe on the top, um, but as far as mocks goes, most people usually just use two of these. The studs on the side of these two windscreen pieces here are a little distracting as well. Uh, I tried to fill these out with either 1x1 one one, uh, cheese slopes in trans black and trans black tiles. Um, neither of them really looked great, and it, what happened was it kind of made this rear cockpit too fat, if you will, so it extended too far on this side and that side, and it didn't really give it the right profile. So yeah, they're a little noticeable, and I kind of concluded that they're fine, just, just as bare studs. Next, I want to highlight the amazing job the designer does making this a smooth slope and eliminating the steps or the waterfall you typically see with LEGO slopes when they're placed in sequence like this. This allows for this really smooth top section to just kind of sit on there and match up almost perfectly with it. And this is accomplished using alternating headlight bricks and standard snot bricks to get the LEGO math to work out just right such that those little steps um, are eliminated. This is also the reason you see this kind of subtle difference in stud pattern on the top here. So it's kind of hard to see here, but it's really impressive when you see it in person. The doors are a little bit finicky to open, but they do actuate the way you'd expect them to with the front door sliding out and the rear door moving to the back. The front door droops a little bit just because it's only on one um, set of Technic arms. 
and the rear door is a little bit more stable because it has two. Uh, this is not a terrible thing because it means the front door is a little easier to open and in turn so you pull this one out first and that allows you to open the back door which doesn't have this little tab to grab onto. Any more resistance in the front door with say another uh, set of Technic arms would make it a little too difficult to open so the, the sag is definitely an acceptable compromise there. Inside the passenger area, let's see if I can get the light right, you can just see these little whisk pieces on the bar holders, and those represent, of course, the handholds for the passengers. It's a little difficult to see, but there is a ton of room in here for minifigures. There is an alternate set of steps such that you can place one by one snot bricks instead of these um, fluid bricks here, so you can actually stud the minifigures in. Um, clearly, I chose not to do that, but I'm sure you could fit easily a dozen minifigures in here, if not more. There are attachment points built in for the spotlights, but the instructions don't include any um, to build them, which is a little unfortunate, but oh well. And then moving to the wings, there's some great color detailing here, as well as this, um, this shallow angle at the back for uh, the trailing edge of the wing uh, that clips in on both ends. Very clever. And the wing cannons are also enclosed in the trans-black hemispheres here. The circular rocket magazine makes great use of these arrow pieces, and the rocket launchers themselves along the top, while not perfectly round anymore, um, using these long slope pieces, they do taper down to a nice point. And this coconut palm tree with the Technic connector uh, continues that transition. And in my opinion, those look, those look really good even though they're not circular. The rear ramp does drop down. Um, usually you have to have one of these doors open to drop it down, um, which is a little unfortunate. It, would, it might have been nice to have like a little tabs built into here somehow just to make it easier to pull without having to open the doors. Um, and these two pieces here are where the optional speeder bikes rest if you choose to build those. And what I assume are the engine vents, well, what are the engine vents are also a very clever piece of um, construction. These assemblies are just plopped into these train windows here and they're held in place by friction. And finally, the rear cannon is just a simple uh, construction with this um, dome, fez, and bar piece. Uh, it's not poseable or anything, it just kind of sticks back there. So overall, the gunship looks amazing, and it's really fun to look at all these intricate patterns that you see um, throughout, uh, especially on the side here and the wings, uh, and just kind of imagine how they how they fit together. I think this is by far the best looking gunship model I know of, and that's including the new UCS version. And it's honestly, once you've got it in front of you, it's really hard to believe that there's almost 2,500 pieces in this this very small volume. Uh, for reference, the gunship has, what, 3,400 or something like that? Um, and it's like literally twice as big, at least, uh, in, in length, and probably three or four times as big in volume. Um, and granted, a lot of that is empty, but um, yeah, it's just really, this model is really impressive and how many pieces it packs in. Last but not least, I'll mention that the stand also looks great, and in my opinion, it's more or less mandatory. It lifts the gunship up about three inches off the surface it's resting on, and it rotates free freely, which is not only amazing for review purposes, uh, but it also puts it at a slight angle. The gunship also rests securely on the stand with these two Technic pins. It's not going anywhere. And yeah, so if you build this model, I highly recommend building the stand. The Clone Wars model uses 369 elements and 2,448 pieces without the stand. And while I do highly recommend the stand, there aren't many substantial substitutions for it since it's all black, and I do think black looks best. The parts aren't anything particularly unusual or expensive either. Unlike many of my previous reviews, a lot of the commentary here is going to be referenced with the steps associated with each change. And with this many pieces, you can rarely substitute all of a particular element the model does come with instructions for a less expensive version that omits some of the more expensive pieces, which is pretty awesome. 
I didn't do an in-depth analysis of that one, so I leave it to the viewer to decide which of the following substitutions applies in their particular scenario. Finally, I will warn you that the large number of substitutions means this part section is pretty long, but I will add bookmarks so you can skip ahead, or you know, feel free to pause this as you, as you need to. So starting with some of the pieces that can be any color, the Technic pins you already have, or um, need to buy, I guess. They can be substituted for variants without friction ridges as applicable. I omitted the trusty uh, Technic pin with friction ridges part 2780, as those are all going to be black by default, but all of these Technic pieces can be any color. Similarly, none of the Technic axles are visible and can also be any color. There are 10 brick 1x1 part 3005 and 10 brick modified 1x1 with stud on one side specified in light bluish gray. These are used to create that studded cargo floor I was talking about so that you can pose minifigures inside the cargo bay here, but if you don't want them you can take these out. Um, note that you should also take out the 10, X, the 10 brick modified 1x2 with grill fluted profile part 2877 in light bluish gray if you do go with the studded floor. Parts for the two speeder bikes are included in the parts list, but they don't have a note or a comment next to them if you don't care about those builds. Um, I did build one, it's fine, um, I'm not real interested in speeder bikes though, so um, I would probably just skip it if you're only looking for the gunship. And the parts you use for the speeder bikes are as follows. The three brick modified 1x2 with pin specified in blue, part 2458, are hidden and can be any color. Those are hidden inside the nose cone here. The lone brick 1x4x3 in medium azure, part 49311, is also hidden and can be any color. Also right underneath, basically right underneath this uh, divider between the two cockpits. The one brick modified 1x4 with log profile, part 30137, specified in medium nougat, is hidden and can be any color. The lone 2x16 plate, part 4282, specified in black, is almost completely hidden. Um, if you wanted to be safe, you could stick with light bluish gray or dark bluish gray if you've already got them. Um, it forms kind of the long uh, central section right above where those um, minifigure whisks are representing the handholds. The four Technic Slope 33, 6 by 1 by 1 and 2 thirds long wingback, part 2744 in white, are completely hidden and can be any color. Those form part of the wing support structure. The 4x10 plate specified in white, part 3030, is hidden and can be any color. That forms the base of this top section here. The one plate modified 2x3 with hole, part 3176, specified in bright light orange, is completely hidden and can be any color. That is also in the nose. The printed instrument panel specified, part 85984PB176, can really be any printed instrument panel. Those obviously go in the cockpits. Um, or, you know, if you don't really care about them, you're basically never going to see the one, especially in the rear cockpit, so that could probably just be a plain 1x2 slope. Um, but this front one, if you want an instrument panel, any one will do. The two Technic brick 1x1 one one with axle hole, part 73230, are hidden and can be any color. Those are a newer part, and they're right about here inside the fuselage. The two turntable 2x2 two two plate base in white make up the backs of the back cushion of the um, pilot seats. Uh, these can be pretty much any neutral color. Black would work, gray would work, whatever you have. And again, it's really hard to see the one in the back unless you open up the cockpit. By the way, these windscreens just pop out like that. The missiles under the wings require eight blunt grenade tips, part 40598C, and eight small, smaller tapered grenade tips, part 40598D, as well as for the body of the missile, the eight minifigure telescopes, part 64644 in black. So you can easily get away with cones, part 4589B, lightsaber hilts, part 64567, and 1x1 round bricks, 3062B, in light bluish gray, black, and light bluish gray respectively, for a cheaper alternative, and odds are if you've got a spare spin, you have some of those lying around. 
You build these in steps 1114 and 1301. Now I'm going to get into some more specific sections for which you can make color substitutions, and keep in mind this is all specific to the Clone Wars version. I don't want to show too much of the actual instructions, so I will describe um, where each section is and try and point it out to help you cross-reference it with the model you plan to build. I kind of figure if you're following me to this point, you can find the corresponding section in your model and judge if the substitutions I'm making are applicable and or determine for yourself uh, what to do. All the parts from steps 112 to 122 are hidden and can be any color. This subse subsection is the structural support for the nose, so it's all covered over but inside here. Also hidden in the nose are the two tile round 1x1s, part 98138 in black, and two of the six brick round 1x1 open stud, part 3062B in steps 136 and 137, and 139 and 140. The assemblies in steps 197 and 218 are completely hidden and can be any color. These are the bars that these side panels right above the light mounts clip into, and note that I'm leaving out the Technic pins in these steps because I already covered those. The pieces in steps 262 and 274 are all completely hidden and can be any color, and they form part of the kind of central spine of the gunship just above where those handholds are in the cargo compartment. The subassembly in steps 276 through 289 connect the they connect to the previous subassembly in the spine of the ship, and most of these parts can be any color. Note that the two 1x6 Technic bricks, part 3894 in steps 282 and 283, are visible. They're just visible in the back here, um, looking at the top of the where the rocket magazines are. Hard to see right now, but trust me, they're there. Those should be dark bluish gray or black. The parts in steps 315 to 320 and mirrored in steps 325 through 330 on the opposite side are hidden and can be any color. These are part of the wing supports right under here and it also provides the mounting points for the rear door. Six of the 30 total headlight bricks, part 4070 in white, in steps 349 and 371 are hidden and can be any color. In the same subassemblies, four of the 37 1x4 plates, part 3710 in white, can be any color in steps 350 and 372. And these are found um, on the inside of this upper part of the fuselage here. Two of the four plate modified 1x2 with clip on top, part 92280 in light bluish gray, are hidden and can be any color. In step 387, these provide an attachment point for these long sections along the side. The pieces in steps 491 and through 494 and 507 through 510 are hidden and can be any color. These are hidden beneath these sections underneath the wing. Two of the four 2x8 plates, part 3034, and the only 2x10 plate, part 3832, specified in light bluish gray, and the steps 608 and 609 are hidden and can be any color. This is at the base of the, the spine, right behind the cockpit. I elected to go for the non-posable front cannons. So if you do that, the two plate modify 1x4 with tow ball pieces, part 3184 in black, in steps 680 and 689 are hidden and can be any color, along with four out of this 36 bracket 1x1, 1x1s in white, part 36841, in steps 679 and 688. And those form the attachment point for the cannons. Both plate modified 2x2x2 two by two by two thirds with two studs on one side, part 99206 in white, are hidden and can be any color. These go on the back side of this section right behind the cannon assembly and go on in step 705 and mirrored in step 742 on the other side. The small subassembly that connects the panel surrounding the lights mounts to the frame in step 720 and 757, and the following parts are hidden and can be any color. The support structure for the sloped sections of the wings, as well as the Technic brick that serves as the attachment point to the body, are all hidden and can be any color. These assemblies are in steps 1002 to 1006, 1083 to 1092, 
1189 to 1193, and 1270 to 1279. The missile launcher assemblies call for 16 brick modified 1x1 with studs on 4 sides in black, part 4733, and 16 means 8 of them for each. Only 4 total, for, so 2 for each, have to be black. The other two on the other side, or, and those two are on either side with a small gap here, so you can just barely see them. The rest are completely hidden and can be any color. These are assembled in steps 1,118 through 1,133, and 1,305 to 1,320. There were only two elements I think people will have legitimate difficulty buying due to lack of availability and or high minimum purchase requirements. So the first piece is uh, are the two tree palm trunk short connector axle hole with two inside prongs, and these are basically gone in the United States at this point unless you want to spend $250 at AZ Bricks. A good substitute is two cone one and a half, one and one half by one and one half by two thirds truncated, part 33492 in black. And if you go this route, you'll need an additional two Technic half pins and two black Technic lift, um, Technic thick lift arm one by one, part 18654. It doesn't give you the, quite the same shape, but it's the only other piece I know of that makes this transition a little smoother. Um, it's not too narrow, it's not too fat, and um, like I said, it's not as smooth, but it's pretty good, especially for the price. And you can see the comparison here. The second element is the minifigure neck bracket with back stud, thin back wall, part 42446 in dark red. And you can barely see the edge of it right here on the wings, and there's another one on the other side. And this obviously forms part of the dark red pattern on the wings and turning it over. Whoops. Um, you can see that these are, well, both of them are right here, actually, and two on the other side. Um, they're not particularly visible from the top, so personally, I think you're fine using white. As of October 2021, when I'm writing my script here, there were only eight of them available in the U.S., and each one, each seller only had one of them. Um, so that right there, you know, minus the cost of the parts, you're looking at $20 just for these four brackets. Last but not least, if you've got patience and you want to stretch your budget as far as possible, I highly recommend ordering as much as you can from LEGO Bricks and Pieces. It's not worth going through the parts list piece by piece, but as a general rule, tiles, brackets, snot bricks, minifigure utensils and weapons, most longer plates, and by long I mean 6L and above, most modified plates, most slopes, most technic lift arms and most wedges are going to be anywhere from 20 to 50% less expensive and brand new directly from LEGO. And I know I say this in pretty much every review video these days, but it is true. Bricklink is more convenient, but it's not the least expensive place to get many elements. Direct from Bricks and Pieces, shipping is $2.95, and that is regardless of the size of the order. And the price you pay is that it's a bit slower. My Bricks and Pieces orders are taking anywhere between 10 and 14 calendar days to arrive. And everything is mixed into one big bag, so you do have to... It is a little inconvenient to sort them out and um, make sure you've got everything. And you also have to deal with Bricklink's... Um, sorry, LEGO Bricks and Pieces awful interface. But odds are, if you've made it this far into a very long part section, you're willing to put in the time to save some money. The instructions for this model have 1,398 steps, which includes the speeder bikes, and while that does sound like a lot, in the vast majority of the steps you're only adding one or two elements. Whether or not you like the small number of pieces added per step at the expense of more steps is obviously your own preference. Personally, I didn't mind a larger number of steps at all. The pieces you add in each step are highlighted in red, and it's very easy to see where each of them goes. And I did not run into any problems at all as far as viewing angle or where to add each piece. To connect some of the sections, there are helpful tips on the order in which the connections should be made. For example, when you're connecting these long diagonal assemblies, it tells you to clip it in up here first and then uh, secure it down here. Um, another example are these uh, panels down here. First, you make the, the bar connect, or 
first you make the hinge connection and then you rotate it up and connect it with the bar. Um, also, it basically just tells you to be patient with the wings and I found that to be very true. Um, but they're very helpful. Uh, and the build itself is, is fantastic. The designer uses a really impressive variety of build techniques to create some challenging shapes and patterns. When I was looking at the pre-release pre photos on Instagram, the sub-assemblies, they looked intricate but fairly standard. Um, but actually building it, there are a lot of smaller sub-assemblies that fit together in fun and clever ways. And some good examples of this are the way he makes this long slope of the spine a straight line without the normal jumps, I mentioned that earlier. And also the way this dark red pattern comes together on the wings here is really impressive. The build techniques are clearly not what you're going to find in official LEGO sets, but nothing in particular was very complicated. So in my opinion, this in my opinion, this is actually quite accessible for pretty much anyone who has built larger official sets or mocks before. There were three areas that I did have some trouble with the actual connections, and you just need some patience and maybe a little bit of luck here. And the first was getting these side panels on surrounding the light mounting joints. Um, the problem I had here is that you connect the assembly to a modified plate down here with a hole on the bottom, and then you rotate it into position such that a clip on the back um, clips into a bar uh, that you install in a previous step. Um, on both sides, when I applied pressure to make the clip and bar connection in the back, the, this hinge connection tended to come loose. Um, with this first one, uh, I was able to reach in from the other side to apply some counter pressure so that that didn't happen. But when you're trying it on this side, obviously the other side is closed up, so it was a lot more difficult. Um, so yeah, just be patient, um, and maybe yours will work out on the first time, of course. Um, but I found that one a little bit frustrating. And the second one you might want to look out for is when you're building the wings. Um, when you're building this, th this section is under a lot of tension. You can kind of see even here there's some gaps that um, wouldn't be there in, in a normal uh, LEGO set. And that's because this um, section with these triple slopes here, they're under a lot of tension. So when you build the wing, it tends to bow, bow out like that. Um, there's a picture of it. But uh, it's actually pretty neat how this all comes together in the end to make um, this, this nice unified wing shape. This one was less of a problem because, like I said, it works out fairly well in the end. It's just a little nerve-wracking while you're doing it because it didn't look right until the very end. So uh, I guess my advice there is just to be patient, build, build according to the instructions, and everything will work out just fine. And the last part is I cannot get this rear hemisphere to secure in any meaningful way. You can see it's just kind of like a... I don't know, a loose tooth here. Uh, the front one's got some friction because I think it presses against the uh, the dome pieces uh, inside, but I cannot get either rear hemisphere to be very secure. Um, so let me know if you, if you are able to figure that out, but um, I have a feeling that's just how it is. So overall, this was a really fun building experience, uh, not particularly challenging in terms of techniques. And the way the sub-assemblies are sequenced, it, it keeps things interesting. It's not like you're just doing a, a monotonous build. Um, but the possible exceptions of the doors, just because there's a lot of parts associated with the doors, uh, but it's definitely not too bad. So uh, I think uh, David Buchholz and the Brickwall team did a great job with these instructions. Uh, the only very minor error I found was in step 270, where the element graphic covers up the sub-assembly graphic. So very well done. This is definitely a model you should treat with care. Overall, it is going to be able to withstand casual bumps and handling, but this is not one I would recommend as something to play with or swish around. Um, this is going to be best on a shelf or, or in a mock, staying in one place. And of course, most of that is due to the awkward shape. Um, there's not really a great place to grab this. And one of the best features I thought about set, set uh, 75021, which was the last playset play gunship we got from LEGO, was that little handle that was right about here. So you could pick it up and you could swoosh it around even though um, you know, it was relatively easy, if a bit awkward, but uh, of course there's no such thing here. I definitely recommend holding this with two hands from the bottom, as the ship will tilt too far forward if you try and pick it up by the wings, which um, doing that is a very 
very risky proposition. I haven't tried it just because I don't trust myself to, uh, I, I don't trust the model not to just fall apart, but um, you can kind of hear it creak as I do this anyway. So, yep, not going to happen. Uh, the cannons are, of course, quite delicate in the, in the non-posable version. I imagine they're a little more durable in the posable version. Uh, the lower edge of the doors, um, my first instinct is always to grab the doors by the bottom here where I really should be using this little tab, but um, when you grab the bottom, these slip pieces just kind of fall off sometimes. Uh, also, if you're manipulating the doors, sometimes they catch on something and fall off as well. So they're a little delicate. Uh, and lastly, on the door, again on the doors, I found that this rear section right here comes off a lot just because uh, sometimes it can be a little tough to jam the doors back in place um, just because the tolerance is so tight. So not a big deal to put back on, but um, something to look out for. And then as far as swooshing it, again, two hands is fine, but trying to hold it and swoosh it with one hand is not something I would try, um, especially <laughs> especially given the level of effort you're going to have to go to to put it back together if something falls apart. So overall, I don't think it will surprise anyone that this is primarily intended to be a display set. Um, it does have some limited playability, I and mean, it is durable enough, like I said, to just kind of casually swoosh it around. But yeah, by and large, this is one that you're going to want to put on your shelf and leave it for people to admire. In closing, Dave Buchholz and Brick Vault's version 2 gunship is uh, a masterpiece. It is a beautiful model, and it's far and away the most screen accurate gunship that I know of. It comes in a manageable size for display purposes. It's not like the UCS gunship where you need a coffee table. Um, and it's a fun build experience that's accessible to pretty much anyone with the inclination and uh, patience to, to order the parts. So all of this does come at a cost. Without any substitutions and without the stand, BrickLink was returning between 9 and 11 stores and $336 and $345 before shipping and tax. And that comes out to about $381 to $400 uh, after shipping and tax in the United States. And I will note that due to uh, minimum buys and um, just the lack of availability, that does not even include the coconut palm tree and those red minifigure neck brackets. If you substitute the white minifigure neck brackets for the dark red and the truncated cone for the coconut palm tree trunks, um, my BrickLink results got down to 8 stores and $325 before shipping and tax, which is about $365 after shipping and tax. And it's a bit tough to estimate, but if you order the large portion of the pieces directly from LEGO, I'm willing to bet that you could get this down to under $300, filling anything not available from LEGO from BrickLink. Thanks as always for taking the time to watch my review of Dave Buchholz and BrickVault's Republic Gunship version 2. If you've built this model you have something to share that I left out, or have a question about something I didn't cover, please leave them below in the comments. I'm very curious to hear about uh, other people's build experiences and how they compare, especially for those that built other variants. Last but not least, as always, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, or following me on Instagram. Your support in any form makes a big difference, and I greatly appreciate it. I hope to see you back next time.